And we are showtime. Good to see you all. It's so fun. We sit backstage and we can't talk to each other. We just kind of look at each other. At least I can look at them. But uh, we just wait and they look like they're calm and comfortable. But anyway, Artari, a long time no see. <laughs> I hope you all have a nice Thanksgiving. Um, we have a great program for you tonight. And my colleagues are going to give some incredible uh, background, backstory on what's going on. But I wanted to mention a few things. Um, going forward, uh, not going forward, going backward for this month, because we've had a pretty, pretty uh, active month. Uh, primarily, would you guys all agree, practicing and recording? That's pretty much what we've been, we've been doing most of all, learn, trying to learn our notes. This has been probably, for me, the most challenging prep um, uh, to get ready for in terms of numbers of notes and, and new materials. So, but uh, Annalie picked a nice piece with the Daniel Romain, and uh, it's uh, we'll talk. And of course, she'll talk more about that later. Um, we had a couple of interesting events this month. We had a, uh, a really wonderful Artaria Chamber Music School um, uh, virtual concert, and uh, the groups all played, and it was uh, very interesting because they all had to record in different places. And uh, some of the groups were in the wind, the wind tunnel out back. Some people were in the boom chamber, right? Uh, Patty was in the boom chamber uh, downtown St. Paul, and uh, but other, I think and 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 just it was just nice to see the different the different ensembles and how they coped and how they prepared well. So they that went really. We were excited about that. Um, the other thing was on that same night, uh, Artaria had recently recorded uh, the Beethoven, uh, um, uh, went out of my head, help me out. Opus 18, number one. Thank you. <laughs> I kept saying 18, number two. I said, wait a minute, we didn't do 18, two. 18, one. Thank you, Patty. A little frozen moment there. Uh, we did that and uh, along with one of the uh, William Grant Still pieces, which was requested by the by the uh, uh, Rochester Chambers of Society. So you can go to their website and see that recording because uh, they'll be brought, they've already broadcast that a couple of weeks ago, but I think it's still up there. And then finally, I just wanted to mention that our Give Men um, uh, outreach, uh, reach out to uh, our, our friends and colleagues and supporters went very well. And we want to thank you. Uh, uh, Today's a day of uh, day after Thanksgiving, but we appreciate your giving and helping our Tanya get through this uh, really tough time. So we'll continue to prepare and 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 to work and to uh, get our concerts ready. Um, anyway, so let's get on. I think for the first, uh, Nancy, you're up for the first one. So I'll get you uh, get you going here. Thanks, Ray. Uh, it's great to see all of you. Thanks for for showing up tonight to uh, hear some really really wonderful music. This is going to be a really uh, exciting program and um, we're going to start it with a very short piece by Franz Schubert, the Viennese composer. Um, this was written in 1820. Uh, Schubert, as you may or may not know, uh, was a devotee of Haydn um, and knew the work of Mozart, but he was, he absolutely worshipped uh, Ludwig von Beethoven and um, all of those gentlemen lived at one point in Vienna, but, but Schubert is the true Viennese having been born there. The fifth of five surviving children, his parents had 12 children and all five survived. He was the youngest and he became the violist in the family quartet. And that's where he learned, uh, he was always writing things, always full of tunes in his head from a very young age. Um, that's where he really cut his teeth writing early string quartets that uh, once in a while get performed, but mostly uh, this uh, piece we're going to play for you now is the um, known as the Quartet Sots. He only completed the first movement of what was going to be a full string quartet, his 12th quartet in 1820. Um, for some reason, people give various ideas of why he didn't finish it. Nobody really knows. Uh, he just didn't get around to finishing it. Um, he started a second movement, wrote about 40 measures or so of a second movement, which uh, once in a while gets unsuccessfully completed by somebody just out of curiosity and performed. And no, it, it really isn't part of the genius of the, of the first movement. It's complete unto itself. Um, and it sh uh, oh, um, ushers in, that's the word I'm looking for too, it ushers in the last of his four quartets who are, which are all masterpieces of great maturity. Um, this one precedes the A minor, the Rosamunda, followed by the D minor, Death and the Maiden quartet, and finally the G major minor quartet, a huge, 
huge undertaking by any quartet to play that. And it is still a quartet that's in our future. It's one of the rare pieces we have not played by Schubert yet. And we're going to sink our teeth into it as soon as possible. I uh, just wanted to mention a couple of other contemporaries who were writing at the time of Schubert that you may not be aware of in 1820. Over in Germany, uh, Fanny Mendelssohn was writing. And she wrote beautiful music for piano and strings, piano quartet, piano trio. Uh, they are performed often these days. And the other uh, uh, woman of stature was Louise Ferranc in Paris, France. Uh, she is, um, her works are absolutely in the vein of, of uh, the early works of Beethoven. Very lovely, very, very great. So those two women were uh, successfully composing at the same time as Schubert. Uh, as you know, he died an untimely death at the early age of 31. Uh, he was quite sick toward the end of his life, suffering much and writing all the way to the very end. I too wanted to just say that I'm thankful to all of you today for being here, thankful for, uh, for being able to gather with my family over Zoom yesterday, um, and thankful for my, my health, my family, my friends, my colleagues, and also just for this continuing opportunity to perform for you, our viewers, our listeners, and our students, and uh, continue to serve you through music. Enjoy the Schubert. Thank you. 
What a delight. That piece is always so charming. Uh, great to hear, great to perform. Uh, we're going to completely switch gears now and share with you the music of African American composer Daniel Bernard Romain. And he goes by DBR, his initials. He has a fascinating background. Uh, he's in his late 40s. And he was born to Haitian immigrant parents and um, also lived um, in southern Florida for quite a bit of his life. And so he was really influenced by Cuban, Dominican, Puerto Rican music, the rich cultures in that area of southern Florida. Uh, he also studied under band leader Mitch Miller. He played electric guitar and synthesizer at a young age, um, performing rock and hip hop. He was a member of his school's jazz band, which um, backed up such greats as Ray Charles and Dizzy Gillespie. So he has uh, such a fascinating uh, and diverse um, musical background. So he blends um, all of this in his music. And he was, he was actually a classically trained violinist, but uh, plays an, quite a number of other instruments as well. But you'll hear this blend of funk, rock, hip hop, and classical music in his works. Um, he's composed, composed chamber works, orchestral, and operatic works. Um, he, he says this about his background. He says, as a Haitian American composer, I was raised by immigrant parents from Haiti who experienced American life both before and after the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Their views were informed by life on a free island nation in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, life in the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, and life in the complex diversity of Pompano Beach, Florida. Civil rights for our household was global, local, and part of the very fabric of our lives and culture. So he's absolutely committed to social justice in his performance, in his composition, in his work with uh, students. Um, and he wrote uh, a set of string quartets, um, five quartets, and each one of them was um, devoted to um, a civil rights era icon. And the one that we will be playing is um, the fifth quartet dedicated to Rosa Parks. Um, he, it, well, it's a three movement work. Um, the, the first movement is entitled, I Made Up My Mind Not to Move. And it comes from her quote, that I will just share with you to bring it to memory. People always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, but that isn't true. I was not tired physically or, or no more tired than I usually was at the end of a working day. I was not old, although some people have an image of me as being old then. I was 42. No, the only tired I was was tired of giving in. I knew someone had to take the first step and I made up my mind not to move. Our mistreatment was just not right, and I was tired of it. So the first movement entitled, I made up my mind not to move, you'll hear this repeated ostinato um, rhythm. And it's not explosive. It's simply strong, 
ever present, full of conviction, and yet dignified, deeply dignified. The second movement that we'll be playing is entitled Clap Your Hands. And you'll see us clapping. Uh, I've watched performances of this and inevitably I think the audience generally joins in on the clapping, which is great fun. Uh, we'll even be stomping our feet. And um, Daniel Romain says he, he was inspired by hip hop rhythms, but also that clapping of hands even dates back to the first humans, that it's something shared by all cultures of all time. So it's very uh, communal and celebratory. Uh, the third movement that we're playing is, it, it really consists of slow, kind of questioning, dissonant um, phrases that lack resolution. Perhaps reminding us that our work for justice is far from done.
Thanks for watching that. Um, it's such a great piece to play. And I think it's important that we keep this message going of sharing um, multiple cultures, music, and um, we'll continue on with the next one. But before uh, I do so, again, I feel like we should clap our hands for Ray Shows for all the video editing that he does for these projects. So please, everyone, give the clap emoji for Ray. Um, so the next piece, or the, our final piece on the concert today is Gina Serra's Second String Quartet, which was written in 1958. It marks the beginning of his third musical period, Neo-Expressionism. Although in this period, he experimented with serialism, magical, or magic surrealism, and 12-tone theory, at the heart of each musical period is his Argentinian na na uh, nationalism and heritage. Though this was first premiered in 1958 by the Juilliard String Quartet with great critical acclaim, he later revised the piece in 1968. Heavily influenced by Bella Bartok, the overall form mirrors the five movement arc of Bartok's fourth and fifth string quartets in tempo and in character. The third movement acts as a keystone of the piece entitled Presto Magico. And in similar style to uh, Bartok's night music, which you can hear in Bartok's fourth string quartet specifically. With character indications throughout the piece like rustic, anguished, rhapsodic, and furious, I like to quote violist John Largesse of the Miro Quartet, as I'm sure my colleagues would relate with his sentiment in preparing this challenging piece. To play this piece is to be drawn into an ecstatic, uh, ecstatic even tortured relationship with the music. Every performance we give seems to push us to a new and intoxicating peak, leaving us at the audience and the audience inevitably drained and spent. So buckle up everyone and enjoy our performance of Gina Starr's second string quartet. Thank you. 
We're back on. Did you like those primal screams? I had to put that photograph in there. <laughs> well, we survived. It was nice. I enjoyed it. Let's do it again. Not bad for our first performance. Sure? That piece. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I want to do it again. And I want to do it faster. I do. I want to do it quicker. And I want to move those movements. That's our first performance. Most people don't don't realize that we actually have two or three performances in a row that usually we build and we learn from this one. We just had to lay it down and just put it out there. So it because it came up fast, but I'm glad we did it. Whoever picked the piece, I'm glad we did it because it was a it was a, a wonderful piece to play. So anyway, anybody other thoughts there? I mean, we, we need to thank everybody and uh, our acknowledgments, of course, to uh, Bob and Diane again for helping us uh, for creating the series for us to do. And um, the, the next thing up for us is next month. Oh, go ahead, Patty. You were going to say something. Oh, well, I, I might be out of turn, but I just was going to say to everyone right now, click on the Zoom link so you know where it is so you can go meet us afterward. So that was all I was going to say. Just like look for it now so then we all know that you know where to go. It's in the description. I just started it up, so it should be working now. Hey, it, but yeah, we, we can term. talk yeah. about the Zoom, Zoom room, but 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 just everybody know December is Fun Music Month, and so join us for our holiday concert. It's going to be a doozer. Right, we're going to play some of our pieces from our previous recordings, and then some new stuff that uh, has not been recorded. We have not recorded. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure four of those pieces have been recorded yet. Uh, the composer gave us the music a few years back, and I don't know that it's been recorded yet. So we're looking forward to doing that. And uh, record, we're recording it on December 18th. So I'm not sure the exact time. We have to settle on the exact time of the broadcast. Uh, we'll have to figure that one out. Unless we do it live, which we're going to try to do, but we'll see how that works. But we'll TBD on that one. So anyway, thank you all. Um, uh, it, I think it's a, a, a just an honor to be able to play this great music for you all. And it's also to work with my wonderful colleagues. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, we're having a great time with this, uh, despite COVID and despite our uh, having to play very far away. I don't know if you guys noticed, but most quartets sit co closer together when they're playing a piece. <laughs> music. So it does add for some add to some uh, uh, interesting acoustical effects. Anyway, my colleagues, thank you again for the beautiful uh, introductions to all the pieces. Um, I think that the audience got a lot out of that. So, see you in the Zoom room. So we'll see you in the Zoom room. Yeah. Go to the Zoom room. To the Zoom room. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye.